Hello, this is the exam three review for spring 2018. All right guys, so these are the exam three. So these are the three answer portions of the, of the test. Now there are gonna be quite a few multiple choice questions. And so we need to make sure that you have um, the different concepts um, from the slides put into the, um, make sure you understand those. Because they're gonna be asking quite a few questions about the chapter five, chapter six um, material. So with that, so but for the free answer part, this is what these are the types of questions you'll see. Okay, so the first part is find the chiral center of the molecule. If there are no chiral centers, you would write a chiral. So with that, so the first thing you want to do, because you're going to get the molecule and the skeletal structure, is to go in and draw the hydrogens, right? So, um, so here's your carbons here. You're always putting your dots. All right, so one bond shown, so this is CH3, CH2. And here, three bonds are shown, so there needs to be an H here. Two bonds are shown, so the CH2, just like this one, CH2. Here, three bonds are shown, so the hydrogen, um, well, one hydrogen. Here, one bond is shown, so the CH3 and the CH3. Now, remember, to have a chiral center, you have to have four different things hanging off of it. Um, so, with that, so here, the CH3, right, so you have three hydrogens hanging off of it, so they're not different, so it can't be here. So, any of the CH3 groups, Work. Same with the CH2s, right? You have two hydrogens, so it couldn't be those. So the only potential ones you've got are, are here and here. Okay, so we take a look for this one, right? So we have a, uh, right, so we have a hydrogen, right? So we have a hydrogen, a fluorine, um, a CH2, and a CH2. Now, th this is a tie, right? So what do we do when we have a tie? Right? We go one further out, right? So then we can compare this CH3 to the CH2. Ah, now they're different. So this is different than this, this side, that side, and that side. So this is going to be a chiral center. Now we still have to do this, right, because we can have more than one other molecule. Right? So here we have a CH2, a CH3, a CH3, and an H. Right? Because these two are the same, so it's no different than the CH2 here. Um, because this is the same, right, there's no chiral center there either. So that's the only chiral center we have to work with. So be careful. Now for the R and the S. So, for this one here, we're going to have um, the molecule. I'm going to have an arrow pointing to right to the one I'm interested in. So, with that, so you're interested in this carbon right here. All right, so the first thing you got to do is take a look at the uh, at the atoms directly attached. So there are a carbon, a carbon, a carbon, and a hydrogen. Okay, so these are um, the these carbons are heavier than the hydrogen. So this this hydrogen is going to be number four. Okay, so for this one, right, so we have um, two bonds shown, so it has to, be a, um, has to have two hydrogens that aren't shown. Okay, same goes with this one. Here, all four bonds are shown. Right, so it's going up to here, the CH3 group, CH2, CH2. Okay, so for um, this one, right, so then we're going to compare the bonds. Right, so for this one here, we have two carbon-carbon bonds, right here and here, and then two carbon-oxygen bonds. So for this one, we have um, two carbon-carbon bonds, right here, right here and right here, and we have two CH bonds. So for this one, right, we have two carbon-carbon bonds, two CH bonds. Okay. So now what we do is take a look at the heaviest bond for each one. So here it's carbon carbon, carbon carbon, here it's, uh, I'm sorry, carbon oxygen, carbon carbon, and this one's the carbon carbon here. Because this has heavier bonds than these guys, here, um, then this is going to be, this is going to have the highest priority. Okay. Now two and three we don't know, right, because not only are they the same weight, they have the same number of them. So this is a tie. So what we do is we go out one further. Okay, so now we're going to look at this one versus that one. Okay. So for here, right, we have one carbon-carbon bond, two CH bond, right, and then this carbon-chlorine bond. Right, carbon -chlorine. Here we have two carbon-carbon bonds, two CH. Right here, here. here it's the carbon-chlorine bond, here it's the carbon-carbon bond. Right, there's your name. Chlorine's heavier, so, um, so that means that this side here, and this is going to be number three. Now, 
what I like to do is go ahead and just redraw this just like that um, so that you can um, you don't have to worry about all these notes here when you're dealing with the R and the X. Okay. Now for this one, what you need to do, so if you, we'll do the steering wheel method in just a minute. But for this one, if you can do the hand method, what you want, okay, so um, you're going to have to have your, the, your thumb pointing towards um, wherever four is. So if you have four is pointing up, so you need, you need to go like this. Okay. So you're going to, one is up here, right, so you're going to go sweep one to two to three with your fingertips. So one to two to three. Okay, so one to two. Well, if you can do pretty much, if you can do one to two, you're, you're good. So one to two. Um, look at there. Because if I took, so because I can sweep it naturally with my left hand, it's, it's S. Okay. If I try to sweep with my right hand, with the with my thumb pointing where four is, you know, one to you know one to Two like that. One, two. Ow. Right. It's not going to work. Okay. Now, if you're doing the stereo method, you'll say, "Oh, hey, that's man. This isn't the R because it's one, two, three going clockwise." Ah, problem is four is coming out at you like this. Four needs to be going behind. It needs to be on that wedge. And so, if this is one, one, two, three, okay, when we rewrite it, okay, what's happened is to put four behind. Two, one, you know, all we did was, so if it was like that, all we did is, is I'm going to rotate around one, move that over here, and so notice how two, which was back here, is going to come over there, which was three over here, two over three, right? And so, notice how it's kind of clockwise, so it's nice. Oops. So all I did was spin this around to, to put four behind, and so two, which is going back, ends up over here. So it's one, two, three. Okay. There you go. I don't care which method you use. There's other, actually other ones out there too. I don't care. I just, whatever you, whatever's comfortable is working. Okay, so for an anti-meric excess, it's just the percent EE. It's going to be, um, say, that the, the um, you, know, you can do R minus S, although it doesn't really matter because if you get a negative number, it's just um, you just make it positive. You know? So it's, you could say like the absolute value. You know, so, um, so it's basically just how much more of one in the answer do you have of the other. So that's all it's saying. So you would have 90, um, in this, well, I guess this would be 2 minus 98. Right? So 2 minus 98 is the absolute value of it. The higher this is, the, the, the better, the more an antihumeric we could you would have. That's the Okay, so for the meso compounds, what you need to do is I'm going to give you a molecule like this. You need to add a, a, um, wedges and dashes where appropriate to make the molecule meso. Okay, so in this case, what you really need to do is say it's, the chiral centers are here and here. Okay, so you can put, say, the bromine there, so like that, or you could do it, oh, ah. you can put them both on wedges, or dashes, put both on wedges, both on dashes. And then what I also want you to do is show me where the new, that this plane of symmetry is. So it's going to be, in this case, it's going to be right here or right here. You only need to draw one of these. I'm just showing you the two that you could. Um, so that, that, but you need to figure out where those chiral centers are and then put the wedges and dashes on there so that you can um, make the molecule meet so. And then show me where that plane of symmetry is. Right? So if you want to see where the hydrogens are, here, this side of the molecule right, is the same as that side of the molecule. Right? The, the two hydrogens are up, or the two, two bromines are up, the two hydrogens are down. There you go. And don't forget that you can slice through an, slice through an atom. So if there's so like these hydrogens here, you slice right through. That's fine. Okay, so for the mechanism, I'm going to have you do um, one of the two mechanisms. Okay, and, and it's going to be written out like this. I'm going to give you what the product is. I'm going to ask you um, what the um, um, which mechanism I want right here.
here, and then you have your book to search. Okay, so remember, for the SN1s, they happen in two steps. For the SN2, they happen in one step. Okay? The first, um, for the ones, the first step is always going to be the, the leaving group leaving. Okay? And so this is going to go leave your positive charge behind, the double cation plus ER minus. Okay, now you're going to, you don't necessarily have to show the, the lone pairs, but you, you do hit, show me the charge. Since this has a, a positive charge, this is going to go, that's going to attack there, and you end up with this. Now you're going to ask, like, wait a minute, how do I know it's this versus this? Well, I told you what the product is, so we know we're making a new bond between that carbon and, you know, that carbon and that carbon, okay, and the, the nitrogen still has its own pairs. So that's how you know it's, it's going to be. Okay? Now, if instead I had given you a similar molecule like this, I said, oh, this is going to be an SN2 mechanism. Plus BR minus. Right? For the, for the SN2, everything happens in one step. Okay, so I'm going to take this, and it's going to attack that carbon there. Okay? And that's going to kick away. So we're going to end up with this product here. But everything happens in one step. You get one of those two. Okay, so just as a reminder, for the SN1, it's just going to be a generic SN1, SN2. It's a um, type reaction. I'm going to tell you which one, which product it is, because the stereochemistry is going to make a difference if you're in SN1, SN2. For SN2, remember that it inverts the stereochemistry, so where you're substituted in, the wedges and dashes flip. Okay? For the um, SN1, Mechanisms. It doesn't matter where um, what it is. You're going to have an R and an S. On there. Okay. So if we did this one here, I said, oh, it's an SN SN2 mechanism, right? So what's going to end up happening is my acetylene pair is going to go here, it's going to kick away. Now I, I don't necessarily need to see the mechanism, but I think drawing it sort of helps to remind you as, as to what uh, what's going on. And so this has to do a backside attack, so it's attacking from behind, so the OH group ends up behind. Now, if instead I had given you that exact same reaction, and I said, oh, we're running under SN1 conditions, so what are the products, right? So remember, this thing leaves cation and then this thing attacks. And so when it attacks, half the time it comes from the front and the other half the time it comes from behind. Okay, so you're going to get both products here. So you have to be aware of the stereo.